Hey girl, hey, it is Adrian for ProductionCrate.com and today I'm going to show you how to do this cool music video-esque hand-drawn effect, but uh, we're going to do it the lazy way. Yeah, we're going to cheat a little bit. But first we're going to go legit, so you know to appreciate the lazy way. In our first example, which is this skater boy here, First, what I'm going to do is go into the comp settings and bring down the frame rate just as a stylistic choice. And I'm going to duplicate this layer and offset the bottom one so I can visually see how far the skate man has traveled between frames. Spoiler alert though, this isn't going to work very well because of the camera shake. But if you have like a steady camera, this will work much better. I'm also going to recolor the lower layer so I can differentiate it visually. Oh, we're going to have to pre-comp that to be able to see it when we start painting. And we need to select the brush tool and double click on that layer to open up the layer panel. If we click this paint on transparent button, then the paint is going to show up without all this mess behind it. But we don't want to do that just yet because we won't be able to see what we're doing. Here I'm going to start painting away. I'm attempting to draw flames, but I'm not a very good drawist. And I'm using a mouse instead of a tablet. And you really need a tablet to be able to draw well. But now that it's done, I can hit the paint on transparent button and go into my pre-comp and poke out the eye on my silly red layer. And here's what we end up with. Now let's say you're like me and you can't draw or you're like also me and are lazy and want to try and fake it. Here's some ways we can go about doing that. Here we have a band playing what I can only assume is a jaunty little tune. And we want to add some hand-drawn stuff to this. So first I'm going to do like a, an outline around this guitar. And the way I'm going to start with that is by tracking. So let's add a new null object. And uh, let's bring up our tracker. Where is that? Here's the tracker and let's track the motion. Maybe the rotation as well. Let's just find some solid track points on this guitar. I honestly don't know if these are good or not, but let's see where we get. Nope, 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 nope. Let's try again. These points would have been good, but they're too repetitive. This I picked this gold thing and there's four of them, so it doesn't know which one to use. And this one would be good, but his hand cross is in the way. This is uh, not going to be a fun track. All right, you know what? This track is not working. Usually um, tracking will help you in your rotoscoping, but in this case it's just causing us more problems. And this is not a super hard to follow shot anyway. So let's just make a new solid. I usually use red for rotoscoping. I don't really know why. And we're just going to rotoscope this by hand. So I'm going to turn down the opacity. And this guitar has these two main parts. It's got this neck, actually three. This neck, uh, this end part here, and this other part, as you can tell, I know about as much about guitar as I do about skateboarding. Um, but I do know a little bit about rotoscoping, and I know that it will be easier for us if we just roto all those parts separately. And I like to use uh, Roto Bezier masks for rotoscoping, so just click this button here. And as you can see, it kind of updates our curves automatically so that they fit better with what the guitar is supposed to look like pretty smart. And as you saw from what I was doing earlier, this is supposed to be a little bit sloppy, so don't even trip if it's not perfect. For this neck, since it's just two straight lines, I'm not going to use a Roto Bezier mask. I'm just using the standard mask and that'll keep things straight. Doing this in separate parts just really gives us less points overall to move. So I did go back over this Roto a couple of times since there's multiple different parts. But overall, I guarantee you that this took less time than it would have otherwise. It's also, like I said before, very loose roto because um, this is supposed to be kind of a sloppy effect anyway, for lack of a better word. Okay, so now we have this red solid here that roughly follows the guitar. Big whoop, what can we do with that? You can't put a stroke effect on it, can you? Because if we tell it to use all the masks, it's going to show us three different masks. And that's no good. So my trick for this is that I'm going to pre-compose that layer, move everything to the new composition. And now I'm going to use this command, which is layer auto trace. 
and we can tell this thing to auto trace the entire work area based on the alpha of this layer. And if you apply this blur to it, that'll smooth the eye a little bit, uh, which could be good or could not be. It doesn't really matter that much in this case. And we're going to tell it to trace based on the alpha and hit OK. And this is going to take a while, but uh, just chill out. Go get yourself a dang 2% milk and come back. OK, as you can see, it kind of tripped out a little bit um, and made us think that it was going to crash, but it always does that, and it's usually not true. You probably should save first anyway, which I did not do. That's bad practice, though. I recommend that you save. Do as I say, not as I do. But as you can see here, what it's given us is a more complicated mask than what we had before it. Rotoscoped this better than I would have, and better than I did, indeed. If we hit U on the keyboard, you can see that we only have one mask. So instead of using Stroke, like I said before, I'm going to use a third-party plugin called Saver. But don't even trip, because this is a free plugin. And I'm just going to drop that on. And this may seem confusing, because it doesn't look at all like the style that we're going for. But I'll explain it in a second. We're going to want to turn off our glow, which we can do by changing the spread to 0 and the intensity to 0. And now it's just white. We're going to open up the customized core and use it as layer masks. And now it's it's traced over our whole mask. I'm going to thicken that up a little bit. OK, and the reason I'm using Saber is because we can take down this end offset or the start offset or both. And then if you animate, let me turn off the mask so we can see this better. If you animate the mask evolution, then it's going to travel around like this, which we couldn't do otherwise. So that's why I'm using Saber instead of the stroke or even the 3D stroke from Trap Code. So I'm just going to, I'm not even going to use an expression. I'm just going to hit the keyframe, move to the end, and make a new keyframe that's just a different number. And then really just kind of check it and see how I like it. And then I'd also prefer this to be on a transparent background. So I can do that like this. I can add a shift to channels effect and just tell it to take the alpha from the luminance. And there we go. And there is kind of a faint blue edge from the glow, but if we just add a fill effect to it, and color it white, that's going to take it right away. And my last special trick to make this look like it's more hand-drawn is to add a rough and edges. Bring up the border, not too much. And you can animate the evolution as well if you want. I think I'm going to. I'm also going to head over to Footage Crate and open up our Motion Graphics Accent section. And there's a bunch of these cool hand-drawn effects. And I think for this, I'm going to grab some of these lightning bolts and just bring those into the project. And we don't have this tracked because the tracking was too difficult, but that's okay because we can just, just drop it in and just move it by hand. I'm going to scale it down and hit P on the keyboard and just start using this page down button to scroll through and just make sure it roughly follows. On the singer here, I think I can do a track. So I'm just going to add a null object. I'm going to select that footage and hit track motion. I'm not going to bother with rotation, just motion, because I'm going to track her wristband here. OK, so let's apply that to the null. Head back to production crate. And what can we give her? I think I want to give her a star. So let's download this star. And this will be easy. Just bring that star in, parent it to the null, and just position it where we want it. OK, now I would not call this shot complete, but I would say that you have everything you need to get the effect done. Just probably just do what I just taught you, but a whole lot more. Just add more details. As you can see, you really don't have to worry about going frame by frame unless you want to. And here's the final shot after a little bit of TLC. If you found this video useful, leave us a comment. And if you thought it was awful and you just never want to see anything like this again, then uh, leave a mean comment, I guess. And if you want to subscribe, I recommend giving the bell a love tap as well so you can be sure to be notified of all of our new videos. If you're using Footage Create or Sounds Create assets in your work, 
you should show us. You can let us know in the comments or on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or skywriting or smoke signals or by appearing to me in a dream. Those handwritten assets as a reminder are on the Footage Create website. There's also some new paint and ink elements as well that you could use for a different version of a similar effect. And we have these hand gestures that would be useful to use with the hand-drawn stuff to make explainer videos and things like that. And that's going to be it for me today, but I want you to know that you are my best friend in the entire world and I don't know how I would get by without you. Goodbye for now.